Thanks. Uh, so I'm Rocky Tuan. I chair the biology and uh, medicine panel. Uh, um, again, uh, thank you for your interest uh, to attending this session. I hope uh, all of you have something to take home uh, after the meeting is done. So this is, of course, um, uh, to some extent, uh, uh, one of the most important uh, things you guys think about is uh, how is your application now uh, going to be assessed? Now, uh, we listed a few things here. I'm not going to necessarily talk about them in the order of appearance, but uh, more, more or less in the order of, um, of importance. The first and foremost requirement is that your uh, application has to be an excellent application. This was stated actually quite clearly in one of the uh, uh, speakers uh, who shared uh, his uh, uh, experience with all of you. Now, what does that mean to be ec an excellent uh, application? One of the important criteria would be that it's original. You're not just doing Me Too studies, right? Now, how do you figure out that you're not doing Me Too studies? Uh, a very important exercise is what I would call a gap analysis. You read the literature. You need to know your field. And then you need to find out, what if I want to make this field move forward? What is missing? What are the gaps? Find the gaps. Find the one that you're interested in. And then later I'll tell you, uh, you need to beef yourself up as well so you, uh, you can have the credentials to do the, the job. And that's what you're going to propose. It has to be original. It has to be uh, something that, uh, as much as you can, that nobody else is working on. Because, but on the other hand, you can't prevent that. Sometimes other people have the same ideas you do. But you have to be the one who identified the problem, and you're the one who made the proposal. Right? So uh, very important criteria. Now, s with the original idea, then you need to have a plan that is going to be based on state-of-the-art technology, state-of-the-art knowledge, uh, so that it will be a plan that is taking advantage of the most contemporary technologies to move the field forward. So uh, now with that, uh, the other thing, I jotted down a few things here, uh, is the impact and relevance of your field. Now we're talking about biology and medicine uh, specifically here. Let's just put it this way. Does anybody actually care what you're going to do? Ask yourself that question really, really honestly. What if I didn't do the studies? Is anybody going to miss this? If the answer is that, uh, I'm not so sure, well, maybe you shouldn't do that study, all right? You need to do a study that there will be enough people out there in the field who are going to care about what you're going to do, if you succeed, all right? So think about that. Uh, now, let's uh, go down the uh, list on the first one, which is academic quality merit. Uh, the next thing is uh, your qualification. So. Uh, you've been studying uh, Drosophila, and all of a sudden you want to study tumors in humans. Well, I, I don't know whether Drosophila has tumors, but uh, probably hard to study Drosophila tumors. But if you want to make that jump, you better make sure that you have the credentials, demonstrated credentials, that you have the ability to do so. Right? Um, so if you, you do want to go from Drosophila to, uh, to human tumors, you need to have some publications that show that you can do the job, right? So your credentials. And, uh, and uh, again, that is uh, based on uh, either having learned from uh, other experts in the field or line up your collaborators who have uh, uh, expertise in the field. Uh, the other topic is feasibility. We all like to make uh, big contributions and uh, significant contributions. But are the studies you uh, are proposing going to be able to be accomplished during the three-year time period or two-year time period that you have in your grant? It's not that difficult to figure out, by the way. 
So some people say, oh, well, you know, I'm being picked on because uh, I think it's totally doable. Uh, but let's do this very carefully. Why don't, go ahead and write down a timetable, right? Those of you who have done experiments know how long it takes to do an experiment and how often experiments will fail and how long it takes to repeat that experiment. Be very honest with yourself. Write down a timetable. You will find out very quickly whether you are completely crazy and proposing things that cannot be done or you're right on, right? So be very honest with yourself because if you're not somebody, your reviewer, uh, we'll find out that it not, cannot be done. Now, there is a word out there, the scripture, that can be uh, interpreted badly, and that is ambitious. Particularly if it's uh, preceded by the word overly, uh, then you are in deep trouble. Right? Uh, ambition is okay, uh, up to a point. Right? It has to be realistic ambition, not overly ambitious. Okay? So make sure you, you, um, you, you consider that very, very carefully. Institutional commitment, this is very important. Wherever position you're in, whether you're a research assistant professor, assistant professor, associate professor, uh, professor, chair professor, distinguished professor, emeritus professor, whatever you are, okay, your institution has a certain commitment to you. And you should find out what it is. If the institution says, uh, I'm going to give you whatever uh, number amount of laboratory space uh, with an office. You can be very realistic. You say, look, I have this much space. I can put f two people in here and no more than two people because they run out of oxygen if you put any more. Right? So you know that. Therefore, you cannot propose a project that requires six people because you cannot, it cannot happen. Right? Okay? So you may have to collaborate with some guy who has room for four people. Right? So you can do the experiment with six people. Right? So you have to be very realistic. What is the institutional commitment to you as an investigator? Right? So again, like I said, if you are a part of a larger group, that's okay. You can leverage that, that, uh, those capabilities. But if you are by yourself, you have to be very realistic. Don't make up things and hope that something will happen. So you need to figure that out. All right. Now, institutional commitment goes several ways. If you say, well, I need to have this many people, and the institution gives you two studentships, for example. Well, now you've got money for two people already. Right? You just have to find out. Uh, you have, just have to support their habits, which is you have to buy. They're going to want toys, and they're going to want all kinds of uh, daily allowance, and you need to make, come up with money to pay for that. Right? So uh, the other uh, thing that has to do with the institution itself would be, um, would be a facility, such as animal facilities. Uh, such as uh, clinical uh, 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 technologies or patient uh, sam sample, patient uh, uh, accessibility. All those things, find them out first before you propose. If you are in a facility where they only can allow you to, to grow yeast, uh, you cannot have mouse experiments because how, how are you going to pay for all of it? How are you going to find room for, the, for your mice? Right? Okay, so uh, the other stuff uh, is pretty straightforward. Um, let me just see, uh, what else did I write down? Okay, so uh, contribution to your professional development. Obviously, um, uh, uh, if you get a grant, the probability of your advancing in your career uh, will be higher. I don't know necessarily how much, but it will be, should be higher than if you don't have a grant. And so that should be a strong motivation for you, particularly if you're up for promotion and whatnot. So during those times, you particularly have to pay attention to all the things that I mentioned above because you need to succeed because that will help you a whole lot. Um, other things, uh, oh yeah, the last item, non-RGC funding. Uh, it is good to have some of that. Uh, Hong Kong is uh, it's, uh, um, uh, a little different, is unique obviously in terms of non Availability of non-RGC funding. I don't actually work in Hong Kong, so I don't know that for sure uh, how to e exactly uh, capture more, uh, other non-RGC funding, but you should try your very best because the rule of thumb in life is to those that have, more will be given, right? So uh, try to have as much as possible because that will also help your chance of getting RGC funding. So that's it. Thank you, Professor Tan.